In this video, we're going to go over a very quick topic, uh, the scientific method. It's something I find most students have seen in the past, therefore I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on it, but it's also something I think that's very important to our class. Scientists around the world continually use the scientific method in their research, and if you really want to get an appreciation for how chemistry is done, you really need to start by understanding the scientific method. So let's start by talking about what the scientific method actually is. Basically, it is a step-by-step -step process for solving a problem. I want you to notice that nowhere in that definition was the word science, and that means the scientific method can really solve any type of problem that you want. Well, how does it work then? Why is it so valuable for us? The scientific method at its base is very systematic and very logical. It follows the same process every single time, and it eliminates opportunities for error, and it eliminates opportunities for problems down the road. So you're really going to get a good result every time you use it. The scientific method also helps to eliminate bias. Bias is when your own personal opinions or expectations about the outcome cause you to make mistakes that move your results in the direction you expected. Those results won't necessarily reflect the real world, so any type of bias is going to give you some bad results. Again, being careful with your scientific method and those opportunities for bias are going to disappear. Overall, the scientific method is simply a process that eventually becomes a way of thinking. A lot of my colleagues argue with me that teaching the scientific method is a silly thing because real scientists don't follow these steps when they do their science. They just do science. But the reason real scientists can do science is because they've taken the scientific method and they've internalized it. This is the way that those people think now, and this is the way that they approach problems. Uh, to, say, to say then that you guys as new scientists don't need to know this, I think is very silly, because how you get to the point where you've internalized the method if you never learned the method in the first place. So, we were talking about the fact that the scientific method is a process. Let's take a look at the process itself. A lot of different people show you the scientific method in a lot of different ways. You can have varying numbers of steps. At the end of the day, though, it's always the same process from start to finish. I like to represent it in four separate steps. I think it's the easiest way to get things done. All I want to do today is talk about what those four separate steps are, and then later on, we'll develop the skill further. So you always start the scientific method by making an observation. An observation is simply something that you see or measure that you simply cannot explain. Hopefully, once you see something like this or measure something like this, that naturally piques your curiosity. And when you see something you can't explain, the first thing you want to do is get an answer for it. And that's what brings us to our next step, the hypothesis. The hypothesis is your best possible explanation for what it is that you've observed. The key words here being best possible. Your hypothesis does not need to be right. But your hypothesis does need to be reasonable. It needs to be based on everything that you've learned. It needs to be based on everything that you've researched and you've pulled together your best possible explanation. Now, there's one more catch with a hypothesis before we move on here, and that is your hypothesis must be something special. It must be any old hypothesis can't do. It's got to be what we'll call a testable hypothesis. If you can't design a test to determine if your hypothesis are true or false, then it's not a hypothesis that you can use. This is something that students get caught up on very, very often, but really all this requires that you do is go back, reword your hypothesis in a way that you can design a test for it. Once you have that testable hypothesis ready to go, it's time to test it. That brings us to our next step, which is the experiment. An experiment is simply a test to determine if your hypothesis is true or false. Now, doing an experiment, there's a lot of stuff involved with this, and this is probably one of the most challenging parts of the process. We actually have a separate video that you can watch. It talks about the elements in an experiment, and good exper experimental design is going to be crucial. Now, once you've got that experiment designed and you're able to perform it, ultimately you're going to get some results, and that brings us to our last section, the conclusion part. The conclusion is simply the results of your experiment that use data to make a claim about the validity of your hypothesis. And really what you're going to come up with is my hypothesis is true, based on the data that I've collected, or my hypothesis is false, based on the data that I've collected. And that brings you to the end of the scientific method. Once you've done this, you should have a better idea or a better understanding of the material or of the topic that you're working with. But that's not the end of the science process. Once you understand things better, that allows you to make new and better observations, which brings you right back up to the beginning of the process then. Those better observations allow you to create another hypothesis, have another experiment, and develop even better conclusions. And this is how a scientific experiment develops into a scientific career. You can spend your entire life simply refining and coming up with new ideas about the same topic until by the time you get to the end of your career you've really come up with something significant. 
All right, well, that's pretty much it. The scientific method, as I mentioned before, is something we'll be using all the time this year. Uh, and the more practice you get with it, the better off you're going to be.